All right, so today we're going to talk about how to read art. And just like any other subject, art has a vocabulary and you need to know all of these vocabulary in order to be able to understand how to decode art. So today I'm going to walk you through five simple steps to look at a piece of artwork. So instead of just looking at it and thinking about how it makes you feel, which is really a good exercise, um, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and spend time figuring out how you can actually analyze an image of art and then you'll get a chance to write about your own art image. So I'm going to teach you with just one image. So I'm going to keep that image projected um, on the screen while I talk about it. So let's get started on how to read art. So this artwork was done in 1784 by an artist named Jacques Louis David. And I actually have seen this piece. It is in the Toledo Museum of Art. And I have gone there a couple of times because I went to undergrad school at Siena Heights University in Adrian, Michigan, in which it's very close to the Ohio border. So let's talk about five things that you need to know to be able to read art. So the first one is to set the scene. What do you see? Who or what is in the scene? And what might be happening. So we're going to take a look at this piece here. You're, you're seeing a group of figures that are on a stage. Three men on the left are each wearing a helmet. They raise their arms toward the central figure. And he faces the three of them holding the three swords. And on the right, three women and two children lean on one, uh, one another. Pretty, you know, pretty heavily they look sad so that's what we see here that's the first thing is just to describe what what is it that you think you're seeing um, what's apparent to your to the eye um, the next step number two is to identify the techniques so how does this artist work what kind of techniques materials and processes are used for the artist to get this effect, whatever effect they have. So David renders his figures realistically with great attention to their muscles and their draped clothing. He paints crisp, defined uh, details, leaving no brush strokes. So if you look at it, it almost looks as if it's a photograph. Dramatic light in the foreground emphasizes the figures while the background fades into the shadow. He uses what's called linear perspective to create depth. Um, and if you've ever, if you went to Scarlet Middle School and you're, and you're watching this, then you know what perspective is because you probably did a per perspective drawing in sixth grade and seventh grade and eighth grade, at least one of those years. Um, but for some of you, you've also done perspective drawing in your other classes. I just happen to know about Scarlet because I used to teach there. So, uh, the perspective is important here because it, it helps, it's going to help the artist get the desired appearance of looking 3D, which is what we talked about before. It looks very realistic. You can't see the brush strokes. And the lines where the tiles meet uh, recede into the background, so it just makes it, it look all together nice and, and crisp. All right. So the next step, the third one, is to notice the narrative. What is the story? Does the title give you a clue? Are there any other details that help with this story? The painting is called The Oath of Harashi. And I, I always say that wrong. I hope I said it right. <laughs> I used to say it wrong all the time in undergrad too. And we would all make fun of each other for it. An oath is a promise. The Harashi are an ancient Roman family. So knowing that, how might you interpret this scene? The painting shows the three brothers on the left taking an oath before their father in the center. The swords are symbols showing that the promise is about an upcoming battle. And David enhances the narrative through the composition too. So he, he, he uh, the father anchors the scene. So he sort of is the center, the focal point, the first thing that you might look at. He also has a red cape on, which can be symbolized um, in the, the, the closely grouped sons who stand strong, balance out the women in the back who appear to be weak. 
I won't go into my thoughts on this. I'll just keep going forward to number four, which is put it into context. So when does it take place and what's going on in the world historically or what's going on in this section of the world at this point? Uh, Sometimes you might need historical context to fully understand an artwork. David rose to fame in the years leading up to the French Revolution in the 18th century. But this piece represents a myth about this family that was popular in the 7th century in Rome. So, uh, the 7th century BC, that is, in Rome. Uh, so, the myth, in the myth, the brothers swear to defend Rome in a battle. And why did this guy choose to represent something that happened, you know, more than 2,000 years, you know, before him? And... He saw a patriotic symbol in this tale when he was studying it and uh, a sort of call to arms to defend one's home. So this was his first commission that he was actually commissioned to do this, which means somebody paid him to do this um, by French royalty. So rich people were like, "Uh, here, make us something that represents uh, patriotic symbolism um, and a call to defend one's home. <laughs> so they sort of wanted, they knew what they wanted in terms of what it would represent. And they knew what kind of style they wanted. So they hired this guy, David. Um, and he, he wanted to make an impact. So this is the piece that he created. Which leads us to our last question that we'll ask number five. Connect to the artist's life. Uh, who is the artist and what art movements might they be associated with? So details about the artist's biography can illuminate the artwork. David chose to break away from the decorative style popular during the 18th century. So he was kind of like, hey, I'm going to try something new, something that people have not done before. Um, These paintings frequently had like bright, chaotic compositions, and he pushed to return to a more classical style with more simple stuff in them. And that kind of reminds me of now because a lot of designs that we see are um, way more simple. Everything's about simplicity and, you know, minimalism. And so that's sort of like uh, what we're going through now. But this guy, David, um, he traveled to Rome to study ancient masterpieces. And that's where he found his inspiration for this piece. Um, Little did he know that his painting would become a masterpiece uh, in its own right for its own time. Um, The first in a new style of art. So remember I asked you what art movements are these artists associated with? He was associated with a movement called neoclassical. So neo means new. So it was new classical, which sort of sounds like an oxymoron. So these are the five ways to uh, read an art piece. Now you can apply this. I want you to try it. There are some photos in today's slide presentation. Uh, that you can choose from because I want you to try to analyze your own piece of artwork with these five steps. So you'll select one of these and then use the five steps uh, to read art to help you write a paragraph about one of the artworks. So there's five questions. You could write just five sentences and you've got your paragraph about um, your your very first piece of artwork that you've analyzed officially in my class.